at 680 on the AM dial and live on the internet at 680news.com. This is 680 News. It's Monday, August 22nd. Good morning. And for Marlene Oliver, I'm Sljana Timinsi. I'm Paul Cook. 15 degrees and sunny in downtown Toronto. Here's what's making news this hour. I'm Carl Hansky in Godrich, where crews spent all night searching for more possible victims after a deadly tornado tears through the town. It was terrifying. It was terrifying. The GTA also feeling the effects of severe weather. Large tree limbs are down in the Young and Lawrence area. Tripoli reaches the tipping point as rebels storm the heart of the capital while 95% of Muammar Gaddafi's defense forces crumble. At the movies, the help takes over first place. I'm going to help with your stories. We all are. In sports, brilliant pitching and another home run from Jose Batista gave the Blue Jays a win in Oakland and Toronto FC continues to sputter on the road. Sports at 45. An uptrend for U.S. stock futures after the latest weekly sell-off. Price for oil moving higher. Gold soaring to a record. Canadian dollar one and a half cents above parity. Business at 56. 680 News time, 831. Time for 680 News traffic and weather together on the ones. Brought to you by 407 ETR. Airborne and Skymaster 1, Daryl Dahmer. Still heavy going southbound on the floor. 404 Elgin Mills from Major McKenzie. Problem south of Elgin Mills on the shoulder. And not bad at the bottom end of the 404 southbound. Busy through Shepherd Collectors. Approaching 401 Express out of the Don Valley to Winford Drive. Busy down through Don Mills. We've given rescue a call about the traffic light problems on Don Mills at Duncan Mills southbound. It's heavy on Don Mills from south of the 401. Jennifer Young. Spotted new problems now in the MTO Compass cameras. Eastbound on the 403 in Mississauga, just east of Huron, Ontario. Stalled vehicle in the left lane. Nobody on scene. It's heavy from approaching Aaron Mills all the way through to east of Huron, Ontario. South 410 coming out of Brampton. Heavy down towards the Courtney Park stretch, but no problems. The Gardner still heavy both directions into and out of the downtown core. Earlier westbound troubles approaching the 427 long since cleared. Now with latest forecast, here is meteorologist Jill Taylor. Lots of sunshine for us today. No major weather worries. It will be windy, though, and a bit below average. The guaranteed high, 22, 12 for the low, and then near 26 tomorrow. So we'll warm up with sun and cloud. Right now it's 15 degrees, sunny at 6 City News, 16 at Pearson. Got the wind out of the northwest at 30 kilometers per hour. Today's guaranteed high, 22. 680 News Time, 832. 680 News. This is in-depth team coverage. Premier Dalton McGuinty says the province is ready to help Canada's prettiest town. Residents of Godridge are waking up to a state of emergency after a powerful tornado tore through the region, leaving one person dead and injuring more than 35 people. A separate storm formed in that same volatile air mass ripped down tree branches and hydro wires here in the GTA. We'll take a closer look at local damage in just a moment, but we begin our in-depth team coverage of the extreme weather with 680's Carl Hanske, who's in Godrich this morning and joins us live with the latest. Carl. Yeah, one word, Paul. Wow. The square here in the heart of Godrich took a direct hit from this tornado. Almost every building I've seen is damaged or destroyed. A number of homes also destroyed as well, including Barb's. Her entire second story ripped right off. We just headed for the basement at the end of the house, and we got halfway downstairs, and all the debris was just flying at us. Your roof came off as you were going down the stairs? Yep, it did. Yep. He must have been absolutely frightened. It was terrifying. It was terrifying. This man was driving through downtown when the tornado hit and says he had to steer around cars that were in the air spinning around like tops. A lot of the vehicles that were parked out front, the windows were blown out of them, and, uh, and it, it was just a mess. It was just chaos. Now, officials have started doing a better damage assessment, and there's actually a heavy search and rescue unit coming up from Toronto to help go through the rubble of all the buildings. Reporting live in Godridge, Carl Hansky, 680 News. The mayor of Godridge spoke about the tornado at a news conference last night. It's with a heavy heart that I have to be report one fatality and several in injuries have been confirmed. Emergency service personnel are on the ground and continuing to search buildings and grounds in an effort to ensure everyone is accounted for. Local police tell 680 News a 61-year-old man died in the storm when he was thrown off a crane. Environment Canada is classifying the killer tornado as an F2 or low F3, which means impact winds of up to 320 kilometers an hour. 680 News time, 835. At the height of the storm, thousands of people across this city were without power. We continue our in-depth team coverage with 680 Charlene Close in the Young Lawrence area this morning where tree limbs are blocking some roads. Charlene. 
Well, uh, take your pick of any of the side streets in the Young Lawrence and even down to Eglinton. It doesn't take long to spot the storm damage. The most obvious, this tree that is now part of Vern's front porch and roof here at 113 Fairlawn Avenue. He tells me he and his wife were upstairs in the back of the house watching television at the time. And all of a sudden, the whole house just shook. Went, <laughs> what was that? We walked into the front bedroom and saw this tree up against the house. Now, uh, nearby on Alexandra Boulevard, there's also a silver Honda parked in a driveway. Uh, it's not going anywhere, though. There's a large tree limb that has crushed it. The front and back windows have been shattered. Lots of debris around this neighborhood, but the cleanup crews are on scene right now. Reporting live, Charlene Close, 680 News. Still to come on 680 News. Proof that life can exist on Mars is found right here on Earth. 680 News Time, 836. 680 News Time, 837. Now the 680 News Transit Report. First, we're live to Jessica Martin at TTC Control. Jessica. Thanks, LaJenna. If you're heading into the subways right now, still seeing minor delays on the Blue Danforth Line in the east end at Victoria Park Station due to signal problems. You'll need to ask, add an extra five minutes to your trip there. The Young and Shepherd Lines are looking good on your service routes. We still have Royal York closed north of Dundas because of a collision investigation. Buses in the area diverting both ways. That's it. Back to you. And now we're live to Go Transit headquarters. Here's Nicole Janicki. Thanks, Jana. We now have a train delay on our Lakeshore East Line. The 813 from Union to Oshawa delayed about 10 minutes, and that's because of an equipment issue affecting one of our Lakeshore West trains from earlier this morning. Otherwise, everything else is moving smoothly. Jana. Thanks, Nicole. 680 News Time 838. We have breaking news this morning from Libya where rebel fighters now hold 95% of Tripoli. NATO-assisted rebels were met with little resistance yesterday as they made their way into the capital city. 680's political affairs specialist John Stahl is monitoring the latest developments out of Libya this morning and joins us live with the latest. John. Well, the end of the Gaddafi regime is near, Paul. The rebel forces now control most of Tripoli. Most of his defense force has collapsed. There are, and I have Twitter reports, that rebels are meeting heavy resistance from tanks outside the Gaddafi compound. No confirmation as to Gaddafi's whereabouts. Rumors are swirling. One has it that he's in hospital. The BBC is quoting a blogger who says a Libyan businessman has heard he's flown to Algeria. Both of his sons have been captured by rebels and they're being detained. Listen to this. Really dramatic tape. One of his sons, Mohammed, was actually in the process of surrendering while live on air with Al Jazeera by telephone when rebels stormed his house. Our differences could have been solved very easily. I'm being attacked right now. This is gunfire inside my house. They're inside my house. That was one of the sons of Muammar Gaddafi. He was not injured. He is detained. NATO leaders offering statements. So is the head of Libya's National Transitional Congress, Prime Minister Harper, who's visiting Canada, or Canada's far north, rather, indicated that this country hopes the end is near for the Gaddafi regime. On the International Watch, John Stahl, 680 News. 680 News Time, 839. Peel Police believe autopsy results will confirm... The body found in a Palgrave pond Saturday night is that of Raquel Junio, 42-year-old, disappeared Thursday. Her estranged husband and his friend have been charged with forcible confinement, assault and kidnapping. Those charges could be upgraded depending on the outcome of today's autopsy. Last night, there was a vigil held for Junio outside the Brampton Thrift Store where she worked. If you're traveling to the U.S. this week, you may be more impressed with the service. New consumer protection rules for airline passengers go into effect tomorrow. Airlines that leave an international flight on the tarmac for more than four hours can now face fines of up to $27,000. Passengers will be reimbursed for up to four times the ticket price if they are bumped from an oversold flight. And airlines now have to disclose all extra fees on their websites. Straight ahead on 680 News, Royal York Road still closed north of Dundas. Check of traffic and weather together next. 680 News Time, 840. 680 News Time, 830.
27. Now the 6 City News Transit Report. First, we're live to Jessica Martin at TTC Control. Jessica. Thanks, LaJenna. If you're heading into the subways right now, still seeing minor delays on the Blue Danforth line in the east end at Victoria Park Station due to signal problems. You'll need to ask, add an extra five minutes to your trip there. The Young and Shepherd lines are looking good on your service routes. We still have Royal York closed north of Dundas because of a collision investigation. Buses in the area diverting both ways. That's it. Back to you. And now we're live to Go Transit headquarters. Here's Nicole Janicki. Thanks, Jana. We now have a train delay on our Lakeshore East line. The 813 from Union to Oshawa delayed about 10 minutes, and that's because of an equipment issue affecting one of our Lakeshore West trains from earlier this morning. Otherwise, everything else just moving smoothly. Well, Jana. Thanks, Nicole. 680 News Time 838. We have breaking news this morning from Libya where rebel fighters now hold 95% of Tripoli. NATO-assisted rebels were met with little resistance yesterday as they made their way into the capital city. 680's political affairs specialist John Stahl is monitoring the latest developments out of Libya this morning and joins us live with the latest. John. Well, the end of the Gaddafi regime is near, Paul. The rebel forces now control most of Tripoli. Most of his defense force has collapsed. There are, and I have Twitter reports, that rebels are meeting heavy resistance from tanks outside the Gaddafi compound. No confirmation as to Gaddafi's whereabouts. Rumors are swirling. One has it that he's in hospital. The BBC is quoting a blogger who says a Libyan businessman has heard he's flown to Algeria. Both of his sons have been captured by rebels and they're being detained. Listen to this really dramatic tape. One of his sons, Mohammed, was actually in the process of surrendering while live on air with Al Jazeera by telephone when rebels stormed his house. Our differences could have been solved very easily. I'm being attacked right now. This is gunfire inside my house. They're inside my house. That was one of the sons of Muammar Gaddafi. He was not injured. He is detained. NATO leaders offering statements. So is the head of Libya's National Transitional Congress, Prime Minister Harper, who's visiting Canada, or Canada's far north, rather, indicated that this country hopes the end is near for the Gaddafi regime. On the International Watch, John Stahl, 680 News. 680 News Time, 839. Peel Police believe autopsy results will confirm... The body found in a Palgrave pond Saturday night is that of Raquel Junio, 42-year-old, disappeared Thursday. Her estranged husband and his friend have been charged with forcible confinement, assault and kidnapping. Those charges could be upgraded depending on the outcome of today's autopsy. Last night, there was a vigil held for Junio outside the Brampton Thrift Store where she worked. If you're traveling to the U.S. this week, you may be more impressed with the service. New consumer protection rules for airline passengers go into effect tomorrow. Airlines that leave an international flight on the tarmac for more than four hours can now face fines of up to $27,000. Passengers will be reimbursed for up to four times the ticket price if they are bumped from an oversold flight. And airlines now have to disclose all extra fees on their websites. Straight ahead on 680 News, we're all York Road, still closed north of Dundas. Check of traffic and weather together next. 680 News Time, 840. 680 News Time, 841. Time for 680 News, traffic and weather together on the ones. Brought to you by New Canadian Drain and Plumbing, Airborne and Skymaster 1, Daryl Dahmer. Well, good news, Highway 400 southbound through the King Road problems. A great flight delay down through Rutherford Road. Busy at the bottom end of the southbound 400 south of Shepherd to the 401 ramps. Last check, Don Mills still heavy going south of the 401 to Duncanville. Traffic light problems, south 404. It's busy, Elgin Mills to south of Major McKenzie. Busy at the bottom end of the south 404 from well, approaching Shepherd and the collectors to the 401 ramps. 401 express lanes are busy out of the South Don Valley to Winford Drive. Another South Don Valley delay span. Bridge down to south of York Mills. North out of the Don Valley is busy approaching Eglinton Avenue up toward the 401. You're going to find delays eastbound on the 401 out of Milton to Trafalgar Road. Still busy east on the 401. Mississauga Road to Mavis and busy east on the 401. East of Dix, the alternate express and collectors to Western Road. Jennifer Young. Emergency crews just cleared on the eastbound 403 in Mississauga Road, just uh, or Mississauga east of Huron, Ontario. It's still heavy, though, from Winston Churchill all the way through to east of Huron, Ontario. Westbound on the Gardner is still very heavy, approaching Jarvis all the way through Royal York. Eastbound Gardner, heavy Royal York in towards Dufferin. 
In the Burlington area, hearing that eastbound Dundas has been closed down between Walkers and Appleby, some sort of police activity. North and southbound Royal York still closed. North of Dundas, collision investigation. Northbound Keel approaching the 401, slower than usual because of construction in the right lane. Now with latest forecast, meteorologist Jill Taylor. The northwest wind really starting to pick up now, but plenty of sunshine today and tomorrow. Could get some showers uh, late in the day on Wednesday, and we'll start to warm up as we move through the week. By Wednesday, it'll feel more like 33 with the humidity. Right now, it's 16 degrees, sunny at Pearson, 15 at Six City News. Wind out of the northwest at 30 kilometers per hour. The guaranteed high, 22. 680 News Time 843. This just into the 680 Newsroom. NDP leader Jack Layton has died after a battle with cancer. We're joined live by 680's political affairs specialist John Stahl. Terribly sad news, John. Yeah, it's news, Paul, that many Canadians were uh, not anxious to hear but suspected when they saw Jack uh, earlier in, in, in August. We just got the word that he passed away at his home. Just before 5 this morning, the uh, statement has also just been released by his wife, Olivia Chow, and son, Michael. That he was uh, here in Toronto at his home, surrounded by his family. Uh, passed early this morning, just before 5, at age 61. Six Cities Political Affairs Specialist John Stahl reporting live there on the passing of NDP leader Jack Layton. Time now for the 680 News Market Minute, brought to you by Manulife Mutual Funds. To the Business Center, here's Mike Apple. Okay, so, Jana, we have the uh, market futures climbing right now. Uh, Dow futures up 130 points, signaling a positive start to the trading week. The TSX coming off that sell-off of last week of over 500 points and the 179-point giveback on Friday. The price for oil moving marginally higher this morning, up 94 cents, 83.20. Gold climbing $13, well off of its peak at 18.65. And the Canadian dollar, 1.60 cents above parity, up by a third of a cent. At the Business Center, Mike Apple, 680 News. Still to come on 680 News, gross on sports, pretty good uh, western road swing for the Blue Jays. This is 680 News. Because the world has changed, you need 680 News. Three, four, five times a day. Lock it on. All News Radio, 680 News. A clear, sunny sky in downtown Toronto, 16 degrees. Good morning from the 680 News Broadcast Center. I'm Sojana Timinsky. I'm Paul Cook, and here are the top stories right now. An F2 or F3 tornado brings death and destruction to Godridge, leaving the Ontario town in a state of emergency. NDP leader Jack Layton has died after fighting a battle with cancer. After sports, St. Catharines reports another C. difficile related death. Time now for 680 Sports. From Sportsnet Radio, the Fan 590, here's Peter Gross. Slajana in his first Major League start, Luis Perez allowed just one hit over six innings. The Jays knocked over the A's in Oakland, one nothing. Perez, the pitcher of record, when Jose Batista led off the seven with the home run, and that made Perez the winner. Blast number 36 for Batista. He still leads all the majors in homers. Blue Jays went four and three on the road trip, host the Royals tomorrow. Toronto FC has now gone 14 matches this season without a win on the road. Two nothing for the Chicago Fire last night. Toronto hit the post twice in the second half and has now dropped into last of nine teams in the Eastern Conference. Matt McQuillan of Kingston paid a heavy price for not making the cut in the Wyndham Championships this week, and McQuillan needed a good finish to make it into the top 125 in the FedEx Cup standings. Instead, he's 145th, so he'll be on the outside looking in when the Barclays starts this week in New Jersey. David Hearn also missed the cut. But he sneaks into the Barclays at 117th. Webb Simpson won the uh, Wyndham Tournament, prevailing by three shots. Kyle Busch, the winner at the NASCAR race in Michigan. Andy Murray, the champion at the Western and Southern Tennis Tournament in Cincinnati. Because Novak Djokovic had to retire in the final with a bad shoulder. Djokovic losing for just the second time in 59 matches this year. Sports are 15 and 45 past every hour or any time at 680news.com. 680news time, 849. Another C. difficile death is being reported in St. Catharines. Niagara Health says a person with multiple health issues died yesterday in hospital. 32 deaths have now been tied to the outbreak in Niagara. This is 680 News. Scientists have found proof of possible life on Mars right here on Earth. They've discovered fossils in Australia dating back 3.4 billion years. These fossils, though, thrived in an oxygen-free world, which means similar bacteria and cells could thrive on Mars. The study is in the journal Nature 
geosigned. 680 News Time 850. 680 News Time 851. Time for 680 News Traffic and Weather Together on the Ones now brought to you by Toronto Hydro Airborne and Skymaster 1, Daryl Dahmer. Well, Daryl, we've got new problems. Highway 401 westbound west of Bayview and the Express. So we've got the right lane block with a collision. You're going to find West 401 busy. Morningside collectors, then delays West 401 west of Markham and McCown Express. Kennedy collectors building west on the 401 from approaching to west of Bayview and the Express where we have that right lane block. The west on the 401 busy to Young Express and collectors. Another West 401 one delay, Bathurst to Jane Express, Allen to West to Keel, collectors to Weston and the collectors are flying over Milton, East 401 improving rapidly, delays eastbound on the 401, still approaching James Snow to Trafalgar Road, Mississauga Road over to east of Mavis, then east on the 401 is slow, 427 to Weston, alternately express and collectors. South 404, overall pace improving as well, delays Elgin Mills to south of Major McKenzie, Jennifer Young. Problems on the westbound Gardner once again, this time at Jameson, left lane blocked with a collision. It's jammed from approaching Jarvis all the way towards Jamison. Eastbound lanes of the Gardner Heavy Royal York all the way in around the Humber towards Dufferin. West QEW still slow downs from 4 Drive towards Trafalgar. Heavier than usual on the eastbound 403. Aaron Mills to east of here, Ontario. Earlier troubles there were all cleared away. Eastbound on Dundas, still blocked off between Walkers and Appleby. That for a collision investigation. Royal York still closed both ways north of Dundas. And that's due to a collision as well. Now with a five-day forecast, here is meteorologist Jill Taylor. High pressure will give us plenty of sunshine today, but a rather gusty northwest wind, the guaranteed high 22 degrees. We should be closer to about 25. Some clouds tonight near 12, 26 tomorrow with sun and cloud, and then wet weather could return late in the day Wednesday. But it'll be warmer Wednesday. The high 28 will feel more like 33. 27 on Thursday, a few showers back to sunshine on Friday. Right now it's sunny, 15 degrees at Six City News, 16 at Pearson. Got the wind right now to the northwest at 30 kilometers per hour. And a rather gusty northwest wind today. The guaranteed high, 22. Recapping our lead story, federal NDP leader Jack Layton has died. The party says Layton passed away peacefully this morning at his Toronto home just weeks after announcing he was fighting a second round of cancer. We'll have the latest on his life and legacy coming up at 9 o'clock. 680 News Time, 853. 680 News. At the movies, four new flicks failed to finish first. 680 News film critic Leslie James takes a look at the weekend ticket wicket tally. The help wins top spot. We go on down in now. Last weekend's second placer is number one now, helping itself to another $20.5 million. They're not people, you know. Rise of the Planet of the Apes, chant for two weekends, drops a notch to second, gripping another $16.3 million. bucks. So make me punch your lights out. Spy Kids, all the time in the world in 4D, the scratch and sniff family flick. Debuts in third, whiffing up $12 million. I live, I love, I slay, and I am content. Conan the Barbarian opens in fourth, ahead of Flight Night. Don't, don't answer the door. Leslie James, 680 News and 680 News.com. And it's the highest amount ever paid for a car at auction. CNN Stan Case's details on the sale of a prize Ferrari. Oh! It's a 1957 Ferrari Testarossa race car, and it's sold at auction in California for $16.4 million. The car is the first Testarossa ever built, and is the prototype for subsequent models. It's got a 300 horsepower, 12-cylinder engine, and a four-speed manual transmission. The auction house won't say who bought it or who sold it. Stan Case, CNN. Still to come on 680 News, the Business Report with Mike Apple. 680 News, time 855. 680 News Time, 856. And now the 680 News Business Report. Here is Mike Apple. So, Lejano, we have U.S. stock futures at the best level of the morning. Dow futures up 160 points. S&P futures up by 20 points, or 1 and 3 quarters percent, following last week's slump for the S&P 500 of 4.6 percent. Worst week for the broader market average stateside since mid-2009. The TSX looking at a uh, possible rebound on the opening trade this morning, coming off a Friday retreat of 179 points, down over 500 points over the course of the last week. Our benchmark stock index down just over 10% year-to-date. Price for gold earlier hit a peak of $1,898 an ounce. It's off that right now, still up $12 at $1,865. Gold is currently up by 41% year-to-date. It's on pace for its best one-year gain in 32 years, even as the precious metal has gone higher in 11 years in a row. 
So gold continues to be the defensive investment. Silver's up by 35 cents at 42.82. The price for oil adding $1.31 at 83.57. Natural gas down 4 cents at $3.90 per million BTUs. Bank stocks in the spotlight this week with the Bank of Montreal due to report quarterly results starting tomorrow. National Bank and Royal Bank also on tap this week. The uh, economic calendar has Canadian retail sales due in tomorrow. Later in the week, U.S. GDP revision and also the uh, big speech on Friday in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. The Fed Symposium, that annual event where the Federal Reserve Governor, in this case Ben Bernanke, will speak and potentially offer up more economic stimulus, whether or not uh, the U.S. economy needs any more of a cash infusion right now. And whether or not they'll offer anything up, that remains to be seen, will lead to a choppy day of trade or week of trade ahead of that. Canadian dollar is moving higher this morning. It's up to 1.59 cents above parity. The uh, loonie has been moving uh, fairly uh, in lockstep with commodity prices of late. And uh, this morning is up by about a third of a cent. In the Treasury market, the Canada 10-year bond is starting the week modestly higher. The yield up by three basis points at 2.33%. At the Business Center, Mike Apple, 680 News. In Peterborough, partly cloudy, 13 degrees. Perry Sound, sunny and 13. In Ottawa, partly cloudy, 14 degrees this hour. Orangeville, a few clouds reported 16 degrees. Oshawa, a few clouds 15. In Oakville, a few clouds 16 degrees. North Bay, a few clouds and 12. New Market, a few clouds 15 degrees. Betty Harrison is at the editor's desk this hour. Mary Ellen Bettinger, Research and Writing.